my name is Susan Kraft, and this is Talk Art, a program supported by Golden Artist Colors and the Silicon Valley Open Studios. Every year during the first three weekends in May, more than 400 Silicon Valley artists open their studios to the public. This is a free event, and it lets you discover some new, exciting artistic talent or get up close and personal with some of your favorite artists. You can find out more about Open Studios by going to the website svos.org. Today, we're going to talk to Marnie Ernst Zoa. She is a professional artist and an animal rights activist. She's going to tell us how she uses acrylic paints to create fantastical animal paintings and how her community reaches out to her for uplifting pet portraits. Marnie, thank you so much for coming today to Talk Art. Thank you, Susan. And I would like to talk to you first about your pet portraits and how your community interacts with you. How do they know what you do and what do you give to them? I've heard a lot about this and I've seen many of your paintings. Well, it all started when a friend noticed my Beauty is Wild series and they were very excited about this turn that I've taken with my art and they invited me to paint their dogs. Okay. And I just was so excited. To, uh, Dutch and Bella, a couple of boxers with very contrasting personalities and, and skin tones and everything about them. So I really looked forward to showing their personalities and the contrasting skin tones uh, within that first painting. It was a huge success and now about every month or two I get another pet portrait order. Now the pet portrait you're working on today, you told me it's a really exotic animal. I didn't even know they were alive. I thought it was fiction or something that had died out you know, a century or two or three ago. Yes, Amara. That um, is my next uh, pet portrait. Amara is an Egyptian pharaoh dog. She may be, she's a rescue dog, so she may be mixed with some other dogs, but she's pure white, tall, regal dog with big, long ears and bright white eyes, just a touch of blue, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that comes out on the canvas. Wow. So is it going to be something similar to this? You've got a, what is this animal back here? This is a, not this an is elk, a gazelle. A gazelle, an African gazelle. So it's going to be that sort of a... Yes, think? it'll be a little bit like that, but I've also included uh, some pet portraits for you to take a look at. The first pet oh. portrait is Dutch and Bella, and it will, it will look a little more similar to that. So the studio, you get to see some of her art. You've got a couple pieces here, but you're going to see a couple of them on the screen. So uh, Frank, can you bring some up? Here we go. We've got, no, nope, 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 we're going to bring them up. So we've got uh, this, there's four, three. You've got a dog and a cat and two cats. Here you've got a cougar. That's not a pet, but that's okay. <laughs> Some people keep them as pets, but they get a little dangerous. Uh, yeah, here we go. We've got, those are the two dogs you're talking about. Yes, the two that's boxers. Dutch and Bella. Okay. See, and tell me a little bit about those, uh, that painting. Well, more. you can see um, that Bella is an older, more calm, relaxed dog, and Dutch is a little bit of a, a hyper young, maybe a little bit dumb, but only in the most lovable way dog. So I uh, tried to contrast the way he snuggles up to her, and she just shows patience. So the younger dog has the wild eyes and the tongue sticking out. Yes. Okay. All, your, the personalities come through very strongly. They're almost cartoonish. Yeah. Yeah, but, they're, but it's very fine art. Now this one we've got up here, we've got a Christmas cat. It looks like he's in an ornament. Well, I tell you what. Is it really an ornament or is that a painting? It, that is a painting. It's, okay. a, it's an oval shaped pa painting, some, a small oh, canvas. Oh, okay, okay. A colleague of mine lost her pet over New Year's last year. Oh. And it was so sad. She called me up crying in January and said, Marnie, you know how much I love my pet. She didn't have any children. The pet had, it, had its own room and everything. Oh, my God. So I... Uh, These are some pet parents, all right. Yes, yes, absolutely. So I really... Uh, she sent me that picture in, mm -hmm. of Kitty in her favorite outfit, and uh, I'm... And the next one here, they're just moving along. Oh, geez. To the two cats. It looks like one is cleaning himself, and the other is, I'm going to play with you. Yes. I'm going to play with you. That's my newest kitty, Mervyn and Kitty. Uh-huh. Uh, that I just finished that one a couple of weeks ago, and oh. it's similar to the first two uh, dogs, where they have the contrasting personality. One's the older cat on mm -hmm. top of the couch, and the other one's playful. So mm -hmm. they wanted me to capture. You them. did. I think you did a very good job. Now uh, you, you've got these two types of paintings you're doing. I mean, they're all animals, and you've got a very, very unique style. Uh, which I've watched develop over the years. So I've known you for a long, long time, and I've watched your painting develop as well. So 
I'm real happy to see you on Talk Art and sharing your artwork with us and the artists that are watching the, and other people that are watching the show. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how you have developed this type of painting? It's almost it's almost Aboriginal style. Yes, I'm very much in love with cultures from around the world. Mm -hmm. So when I see different art forms, I try to kind of borrow a little bit and playful things that I think will go with the style. Like mm -hmm. you said, a little bit cartoonish. So I mm -hmm. think that the lines and the dots really add to the playfulness of mm -hmm. the style. Mm -hmm. I started out with a simpler, pa uh, simpler, bold palette, simple shapes. And then when I came and realized that with a little scratching and a little, just a little working with the paint, it really gave it texture and interest. And uh, when I really started focusing on animals, that's when the Beauty is Wild series happened. Uh, and it really just made a huge turning point. You're also a huge animal activist. The little dog who's sleeping on our table right now. Joshua. <laughs> Joshua. He is an animal rescue pet that you first found. Uh, how did you tell us this? Tell us his story, his sad story, which now he's got a great, he's in the lap of luxury now. Yes. <laughs> Rags to riches. Yes. So <laughs> what, what, uh, what's his story? Joshua is from the Humane Society. We rescued him along with a hundred other dogs up in Oregon. Uh, the lady was a breeder slash hoarder and uh, Joshua was one of the oldest dogs and of course I asked him for a quiet little sad dog that needed to be ushered out of his shell and when I met Joshua I just fell in love and started fostering and then of course I couldn't give him up. Yeah, yeah. So he was he was one of the lead uh, uh, stallions as it he were. He was. He yeah. was one of the oldest dogs in the pack. Mm -hmm. Okay. So poor guy. Now he, I understand they had their own house and she lived in a different house. Yes. That's that's okay. Well, anyway, thank you for bringing him here. Now, thank you both you. are from Oregon. Thank yes. you for coming down to the Bay Area to be on the show and bringing little Joshua along with your paintings. <laughs> um, can you tell me about your Beauty is Wild series? Or tell us about your Beauty is Wild series, which now he's not too wild of a guy. He's obviously more of your pet nature <laughs> group. But um, for the two that are up here and the others we're going to be showing soon on the screen, tell me about what you let me get me more explicit about my question for you. You have a Beauty of Wild series that is inspired by uh, your deep connection to wildlife. So it, please explain how you went from wandering around the woods to, uh, to this incredible series of paintings. Well, nature is so vast and beautiful and glorious. There's just no end to the number of animals and, and animal life. And I started with natures and flowers, but then I realized as passionate as I am about animals, I should really try one. And I think I tried a panda or something, and, and I realized I really enjoyed it. It really took me over. Mm -hmm. And I really couldn't stop until I was finished. And that's when I realized that I'd finally found that, that piece that I needed to make me feel complete within my art. Mm -hmm. So I called it Beauty is Wild because I just think that the nature itself is the most beautiful thing there is. Well, you are a wild and beautiful creature yourself. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, you, uh, not too unlike uh, like your little friend there, you came from a long, hard road to be where you are now. You're a very successful person in real estate. Uh, you are happily married. You're a homeowner. You are, you know, deeply, deeply involved in animal rescue. You're not just an adopter. You have raised money. You've done huge fundraisings. You've done all sorts of wonderful things. And you've had to... Um, take this long hard road to get here so I have a feeling that your uh, what's the title of your group again wild is beauty is wild beauty is wild beauty is wild that you've had this wild life that you've had to kind of dig your way out of to understand how beautiful life is absolutely I think um, adversity really helps you to appreciate things mm -hmm. as well as maybe take a little closer look at how things are made up of so that you can understand them better and I understand you also have a, you have a philosophy about art. And there's five different, five or four? Five. Five different segments of, not segments, but. Components. Components <laughs> of life that most artists have, have gone through deeply in order to become, not in order to become, but this is what encourages them and opens them up to become artists. You didn't go to school as an artist. You didn't paint as a little girl. You started out once you reached maturity in uh, 18 or 19. So 
And what are those five components? Well, the artist world is made up of so many diverse people, but I think that the five components that I see most commonly in the artists that I know are individuality, of course. We're all unique people, but a sense of understanding what your own individuality is. Vision, uh, a desire to look closely at the things around you like we were just talking about. Pain, as difficult as that is, pain helps us grow. It really is, like I said, ad adversity. Uh, love, love inspires me and I think it inspires everyone. Mm -hmm. And curiosity. Curiosity. Curiosity, that, that driving to push it further and see what's next. So are those the five? They I are. I wasn't counting. Was anybody else <laughs> counting? I don't know. <laughs> I think I covered them all. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, I uh, I thank you for sharing that. And I, you know, I I have to agree. I'd have to agree that that most artists have, most artists that are deeply entrenched and cannot leave art because it's something they have to use to and it's become part of them is, you, you have to express. You've had so much in your lives that there you need more than just a simple verbal communication or even. Uh, it, it, or, or just what you wear or where you live to express mm -hmm. who and how, you know, what you are about life. Absolutely. I'm very compelled to express my individuality through art. And as much as I try to in my personality and in my career, this is the way that it is shown the best. It's another dimension. It's another yeah. outlet. Yes. And, uh, and I, like I said, I've watched you develop, and it's just, it's just so, it's such a wonderful thing to see. Thank so you. you're welcome. You're welcome. I um, where are we with this? We've got uh, your wild series. I do want to talk about your um, about your wild series. Beauty is wild. So we have some images we can bring up, and I also understand you've got poetry. So we're going to talk about your poetry a little bit later. Okay, great. But we have our next series, and it's our B series. Uh, can we bring those up for our viewing audience? Please. And then you can talk about each piece as it comes up. Okay. Right. Oh, here we go. Now here's the cougar. Okay. Now tell me about cougar. This one, you, this was one of your early ones in this series. A little bit, about halfway through. I did a leopard okay. early on that you might remember. It's somewhat similar, and we'll be seeing that a little bit later mm -hmm. today. The cougar. I love his wild eyes. He he's just out there looking for probably for his next meal. Okay. But I had a really fun time with this because, um, as most of you know, a cougar is very monotone. So it's a challenge to oh. do the Beauty is Wild with the segments as I do and, and still capture the shape. So that was a wonderful challenge with the cougar is to just do slightly different tones of beige and, and, and just capture the small parts of, of the animal. So you used, uh, every time there was a shift to change in, um, in dimension, you put in a different patch of color. Exactly, and I, I changed the How direction of the br brush strokes and of the scratching method. So let's talk about that a little bit. So like you, you, I can see over here, I think your snake is probably the easiest one to see. Can you guys get in MC on this at all? Uh, I don't know if, if, uh, if you can get in there, but uh, I think the, st the snake might be the easiest one because it's already compartmentalized. Um, and you have scratches in there and you've got dots and you have little thin, thin lines. And then um, uh, that helps us understand the three-dimensionality of the beast that you're... You know, what's fun about this one, Susan, is that I was able to use the glass bead medium, and that really added the oh. texture, so it's even fun uh, to go up and kind of touch the painting, and if your hands are clean. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Just take so, No, of course, of course. Well, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, only artists touch other, other, other artists' paintings. So true, so true. Yeah, and then the non-artists say, oh, don't you, you're not supposed to touch art. <laughs> well, that's only if you don't know how, I mean, come on. Right. I, I have to touch art in order to make it, so. Absolutely. Um... Let's see. So uh, the glass bead media, I know that Golden Artist has this available. I, I believe that is Golden. Well, yeah, there's all sorts of things they have. There's really interesting things they have. Oh, 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 we've got another one up. It's called Whale. The Whale. Whale is also Blue very whale. textured. Yes, you can see the lines um, stuck right This into one, it. I believe, I am using um, spackle medium to go in and shape the waves and the, and the whale itself. That Beautiful. one is particularly fun to get up. Well, that's, we have another one up now. And we have the next one up. We have, oh, oh, okay, you've got your lizard. Oh, the, it, is it the iguana? The iguana, yes, the iguana. Oh, the, the iguana. You know what? That is one of my favorite paintings, and I did lose the iguana this year in a, in a fire. You lost many paintings in a fire. Yes, smoke it was. Smoke damage or actual fire fire on the paintings? Um, both, both. There was smoke so damage. Sad. There's, you know, I still have a piece of it. I hope to make a little bit of a memorial, but I, it was surprisingly devastating when that happened. But the iguana is a, a beautiful piece. It yeah. uh, captures the 
wonderful variants and textures yeah. in an iguana. Yeah, you did a great job. And the last one we have up is, the last one we have up is, Fred, there we go. Oh, that's <laughs> iguana. The next one now after iguana is, is we have one more. Is this it? Oh, the oh we have a little raccoon sticking its oh, head out of a of them. It's, it's, this, is the, this is one really is a little more cartoony than the other ones. I think maybe, you know what, it's raccoons are like that. They are. They're they very look playful. like a stuffed animal. And I had fun with I'm this like, one. <laughs> just the, like Joshy. Like the raccoon, I kind of envision in a child's room. You know, oh, sometimes I, I go see. into each painting with the personality of the creature, and exactly, it fits different areas, and it's definitely a less serious mm -hmm, painting. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you want to tell us about Beauty is Wild series? Well, one thing that people will notice when they look at Beauty is Wild is that I choose not the whole animal. I often will leave a piece off, maybe a foot or a tail or an ear, and it's just meant to create intrigue and really help you focus. Sometimes in anything, if you look a little bit closer, you're going to see something more than you would see if you look at something as a whole. So if anybody ever wonders why I do that, it's very purposeful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I knew that intrinsically. I just had this, this idea. But it, one of the things you also do is that you use the portion of the animal and your uh, space of the canvas. Uh, the negative space is, um, is very interesting compared to you know, the, the space you fill up with the animal and its parts. Well, thank you very much. Negative so, space is important. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I think people that aren't artists might not know exactly why it works, but they know it does work, and that's why they like it, and they're drawn to it. But that's by, you know, in case some of you out there are wondering why this works, it's because of what's called negative space. And that would be, do you want to tell them what negative space, or should I? Oh, you should. Okay. <laughs> so when you, when you put your arm, I don't know if you can see this. Right, well, here, I'll use my hand. So this negative space in my hand here, is a, all right, now you're going to switch cameras, okay, negative space, <laughs> you guys stop it. <laughs> negative space is where there's not actually a physical body piece. It would be the, uh, the, the background of, you know, so like the, the triangle of your arm here up to your hip, that's right. the most classic one here, or the space along your shoulder and your head, that L shape here is the negative space. So, and in a painting in particular, for your, uh, what's this guy back here? The gazelle. The gazelle. The L shape between the horn and the, uh, the snout and the uh, side of the canvas, that is a tri nice triangle that she made there. So that's, um, that works well like that. And people like, they're drawn to uh, basic geometrical patterns. So triangles are great in paintings if you have it in negative space. And you have three. One, two, three. Well, there triangles you go. There. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm overanalyzing, or maybe you haven't even analyzed it yourself that way. Sometimes, some things I do and some things I don't. I recently had an art friend who was talking to me about negative space, so I've kind of played a little bit more with making it a little less uh, things happening in the background to bring that image more forward, which is what I was trying to do with the gazelle. Oh, it worked very well. You, you, you definitely, absolutely su succeeded. And I like the background painting almost as much as the gazelle itself because the background painting is very intriguing. You've got many layers and you've got scratchings in it and uh, it's, it worked really well. Wonderful, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So uh, we've got some, I don't know if it's time to read the poems or not, but we have some poems. There's uh, three poems, Try Me, The Idea, and Life's for Living. Do you happen to have your other poem of the, um, the first one you read to me today? I do. You do? Well, let's read that one first because I did intimate to people that we had, All that you'd right. gone through, pardon? I thought I, oh, maybe it's down here. Uh, okay, well, let me get it. <laughs> let me get it for I you. put it down. didn't think I'd need it. There you go, sweetie. But I do enjoy sharing my poetry, so I don't mind bringing this out. Are we okay? Is it okay? Okay. I decided to uh, share with, some, with you some poems that sort of reflect the component, the five components of artists that, mm -hmm. I, that I shared with you earlier. This one that you've asked me to read reflects the emotion of pain. Mm -hmm. Are you, would you like me to start? Uh, yes, I had a little bit of a discombobulation <laughs> here. But, uh, Wonderful. So now this one, I, the reason I wanted to bring this up is because I let people know, which, with your permission earlier, that your life paralleled a little bit with, I mean, there's a parallel in human life with what happened to poor Joshi. Absolutely. I think so. this poem definitely reflects the adversity that we were talking okay. about. So let's have it. It's called, Look What You've Done. That wasn't cool, man. For real, it hurt. Your love messed me up, left my face in the dirt. I thought you were the one to protect me from the pain. Instead, you left me crying, 
crying in the rain. Who taught you it was okay to treat your baby that way? Who told you how to show love by robbing innocence away? I can't give you one more chance because what's done has been done and I can never forget that you were the one. But I can still love you because that's what I do. I can love a fool, a fool who's been hurt by someone who loves them too. The cycle of pain touches us all. How long will it hurt? How hard will we fall? I know it stops with me on this family tree. I can leave it behind, but I will never be free. Oh, thank you, Marty. Thanks for letting me share. It's a gorgeous poem, and it's very heartfelt, and it's very, very, you can tell the pain. And I hope that, um, that you release this off that paper, and you put it on a blog or a website or publish it somehow, or, or do go to a readings. I think I will. I've thought about going and speaking to women's groups and, and reading it to them just as a shared experience to let them know that they too can transcend their circumstances. Yeah, it's a beautiful poem. So we have other poems, a little less heavy, that yes. go along with some artwork that <laughs> Marnie has created. And the first group is the C group, and uh, it's, we've got a poem called Try Me. So as soon as the artwork comes up on the screen, I'll let you know. And we're waiting for the, for the group to come up on the screen. So, well, maybe you can just tell us about Try Me and where, how you were inspired to read Try Me, or to write Try Me. Well, I write poems during my gathering period. I mm -hmm. paint for months at a time, and then I'll get into more of a writing stage. And it really just helps me focus my emotions and, and send me in a certain direction. So Try Me was all about the fact that often we will embark on new adventures, and people will be skeptical. They will doubt you. And I don't think always in anything but a loving manner. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. But either way, uh, we're all fearful, and people tend to share their fears with mm -hmm. us before they'll share their encouragement. And so I wrote Try Me as a response to that. Okay, okay. Well, thank you. Can we have the, uh, the, uh, the uh, images up on the screen? There we go. Now we can start. We've got uh, the frog is up. Go ahead and read Try Me, please. There we go. Try Me. Test the waters of my will. I want it. Tell me that I can't. Watch and wonder as I flaunt it. Try me. Tease me with your doubts. I crave it. Candy, apple, obstacle. I can taste it. Try me, skeptic, lull me to sleep with your songs of reason. I shall awake with new purpose and dedication. Try me, I long to see that look in your eyes, a touch of regret mingled with surprise. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. We have Baboon is still up on the screen. What a wonderful painting. Baboon is actually a donation to the San Diego Zoo. Really? Yes, I, I, uh, I just wanted to give back to that wonderful organization. And uh, I got a wonderful letter back from them saying that they were uh, auctioning me off in their next auction. So I hope that whoever received it enjoys it, and I thank them for their donation to the zoo. Oh, well, very good. Very good. Thank you for doing that. Uh, and we have another poem called The Idea, and we have another series, the D series, that are going to be coming up on the screen. And I'll let you know when that comes up. Tell me about the idea. How, did, how was that one inspired? Oh, Similarly? the idea. Oh, yeah, different. A Good. Absolutely. The idea oh. was um, brought, to, brought to me just, oh, the idea. I'll just read it, and you'll figure it out. Okay. The idea. Dance with it. The idea. Let it dangle there, tickling your curiosity. Does it frighten you? Don't you wonder? Hold it close for a moment. Give in to the dance. Drown in its delicate embrace. It's just an idea. It's just an idea. How wonderful. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, these are great poems, you know. And I wanted to tell everyone ahead of time that, uh, that the poems, don't worry, they're not long sonnets. They're not Shakespearean sonnets. As you can tell, they're, they're quite short and they're quite meaningful and very deep, and you can get lost in them. So um, we have one more quick poem, and uh, we have, uh, then we've got to wrap up after that. Wonderful. We have Life's for Living coming up, and we've got some, jape, we've got some images up here. We've got the toucan. Oh, the toucan. That's a wonderful, large, bigger-than-life yellow painting to go with this poem. Life's for living. It really reflects my personality best of all. Life's for living. That's what she said. Walking around, heart as high as her head. <laughs> Laugh if you will, for jest or for spite. 
She'll be who she is if you think it's wrong or it's right. Life's for living, that's what she said. There'll be time to think it over when we're old or we're dead. Wonder if you will and how she got that way. Life's for living and that's all she'll say. Wear what you want, sing out loud, kick off your shoes and dance in a crowd. Life's for living, live large and be proud. Very good, thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, we're ending with the kangaroo, and uh, I think we've got, uh, maybe we have about five seconds for you to tell us about your future art life. Do you have anything else you want to tell us? Well, uh, I would just love to gain exposure and hopefully eventually be able to earn money for animals all over the world. I'd hope to get to a ga into a gallery in Portland with some like-minded folks who also would love to help animals. And uh, maybe adopt about 100 more. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to go to Josh's. Uh, yeah, uh, that could get too hard. Oh, yes, yes, you're right. Let's not become a hoarder. So I've just told that we actually were granted another couple minutes, so let's continue this wonderful discussion. Okay. I thought that we had a, a commercial break coming up, but evidently we get to keep talking for oh, a Oh, wonderful. Longer. So let's go back. I'm going to skip back for a little bit to the, uh, the life is wild, is wild is beautiful. Beauty is wild. Beauty is wild. All of those and, things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so we've got, we know where you, where you want to go. And I'd like you to tell me about where you see this uh, this series going. I know you you started a while ago, and you you're still inspired to keep working on it. Absolutely, so. I started in 2008, and mm -hmm. the, like I was saying earlier, and, and we this is all 2009 know. for the rerun people. This is 2009 November. We're getting close to the holiday season here, so go Absolutely. ahead. Absolutely. So for about two years, I've been painting Beauty Is Wild, and I don't see an end to this series because. Wildlife is, is so diverse. I, I don't know if I'll continue calling it Beauty is Wild forever, but absolutely, I think I'll always think of Beauty is Wild every time I paint an animal. Well, of course. And uh, Joshy, Joshy, come here, baby. Can you wake up and say goodbye to us before we have to go? Hi there, buddy. Oh, yes. Joshy no. had fun. Joshy, <laughs> I can tell. He just is beside himself. <laughs> this like, is fun. This is fun for Joshy. <laughs> uh, Joshy has to stay with you all the time. I don't know if you've all noticed, but he, Joshy is attached as a third arm because he was traumatized. Yeah. And she has gained him back into not being traumatized. But he does use her you as an anchor. It's good to be loved. Uh, thank you so much for coming today, Thank Marnie. you. I had fun. And I hope you can come back sometime. I hope so, too. Great.